so in this lecture we have already uh, discussed that the design of surface drainage system consists of two components first component is design concentration for uh, land grading that we have already discussed and the second component is design concentration for field drains and field laterals after grading the land we can just construct the ditches or uh, the drains okay so we are moving on to the second step that is construction of the field drains and laterals how we can construct that what are the design parameters needed for that in which layout uh, we can construct that so that all things we will deal in this class so uh, these were the two steps in that we are moving on to the okay uh, uh, second step the design consideration for field drains and field laterals again this step has two components first one is design consideration for field drain and the second one is design consideration for field laterals okay so field drains means the small channels smaller channels that we are constructing inside the land and these channels will be uh, the water from all these channels will be collected and given to the field laterals the laterals will be many many laterals will be there all the water from the laterals will be collected to the main channel so field drains are the smaller one and field laterals are the uh, bigger one which takes water from field drains so uh, again the second step of uh, surface drainage system design consists of two two other steps one is design consideration for field drain and the other one is design consideration for field laterals we'll move on to the first one design consideration for field drains so field drains for surface drainage have to allow farm equipment to cross them and are easy to maintain with ordinary mowers because uh, we are constructing this drainage system above the land okay so if we are uh, constructing bigger or deeper drainage systems we cannot use our farm implements or uh, we cannot cross the farm implements over that so what will happen many of the area which may which may have to be used for cultivation will be used by the drainage system so cultivation area will decrease or farm uh, farm operation area will decrease so that may not happen okay so we have to construct the drains in such a way that we can use even farm equipments above that okay so we have to construct small shallower or a smaller width of uh, field drains for that and the surface runoff reaches the field drains uh, through row furrows or by sheet flow in the transition zone between the drain and the field flow velocity should should not induce erosion so uh, the flow velocities in the channels we are constructing smaller smaller shallower channels in that channels uh, the field velocities or flow velocity should be lesser it should not cause any erosion and they are shallower and have flat slide slide slopes okay and mainly they are of v shaped they are constructed in v shaped manner and with a steeper slope more than that 6 is to 1 more than 6 is to 1 slope will be given to the sides in conditions of high rainfall intensities the capacities can be enlarged okay and uh, also it should be graded towards the lateral drain with grades between 0.1 to 0.3 percentage i have already explained you that field drains are smaller one well field laterals are bigger than that of field drains because the water from the field drains will be collected and discharged into the laterals so the slope should be towards the laterals slope of the field drain should be towards the lateral and it should be 0.1 to 0.3 percentage that's it so here you can see the cross section of uh, field drains uh, v ditch it, it should be in uh, v cross section most of the time sometimes it can be given as a flat bottom or trapezoidal shape so these are the specifications given sometimes it can be of this shape w shape also so these are the uh, things the water will be flowing through this ditch okay so these are uh, field drains now we will move on to field laterals so as i have said earlier field laterals will collect the water from the field drains which are smaller than this okay and it will collect the water from the field drains and it will transport or discharge the water to another another main channel okay that's it and uh, they are uh, less than 1 meter deep and usually constructed with motor graders or dozers bulldozers so they are used most of the time
these are the design considerations again uh, some important uh, parameters which we have to notice before constructing field laterals if they are of v shaped their uh, width or depth should be 0.3 to 0.6 meter and side slope should be 6 is to 1 a maximum slide slope of uh, 3 is to 1 will be given okay so uh, you know what is this 6 is to 1 and 3 is to 1 mean 6 is to 1 means 6 horizontal to 1 vertical that means it, it, it is some wider slope if it is 3 is to 1 means it is sleep steeper okay slope will be higher uh, so so these are the things uh, we, which we have to notice while constructing field laterals in v-shaped uh, train itself if the depth, depth is greater than 0.6 meter then we have to give a slope of 4 is to 1 or maximum of 3 is to 1 okay so that is the case now the maintenance uh, uh, have to be considered maintenance of the trains also have to be considered before uh, designing it the field laterals are to be maintained by moving side slope side slope should not be steeper than 3 is to 1 okay if we uh, some if something happens to the drains in future uh, for example, if some plants are growing in the ditches or uh, if some, uh, so what is that, some erosion happens to the ditches, then we have to uh, make the ditch prop, make or clean the ditch. We have to clean the ditch. For that, we have to use some farm, farm equipment like mowers or uh, cultivators, some equipments we have to use. So, if we want to use such equipment in future, you have to give the side slope below 3 is to 1 it should not be steeper than 3 is to 1 that is the case and the special attention should be given to the transition between field drains and laterals so there is a transition zone between field drains and field laterals okay uh, a point at which the water from the field drains are discharged to the field laterals at that point there is a chance of erosion so we have to avoid the erosion at that point so we have to give a proper slope there okay that is another thing and uh, discharge for discharges below 0.03 meter cube per second pipes are suitable means of protecting those places okay and this is the normal layout of a field drain lateral system total surface drainage system okay so there should be uh, this is the seepage drain or irrigation canal this is our field okay this field have to be protected so this is our field this field have to be protected what happens here is the there is an irrigation canal here and from this canal some water will seeps down to this field and makes this field waterlogged so we have to avoid that for that we have to remove some excess water from this field okay so what we are doing is we are first constructing the small field drains here we are constructing field drains so the field drains will collect some water and it will be carried to the intermediate train. This intermediate train is known as field lateral. Okay, field lateral. This intermediate train is otherwise known as field lateral or lateral. Okay, and this water is again collected to the main drain and finally to the outlet. Outlet is the river. So, this is the thing happening. This is the layout, total layout of a surface drainage system. So, we have two components here. One is the field drain and the other one is field lateral. Okay, so... This is the point where water from the field drain is discharged to the lateral. So, this is one point, this is another point, this is another point, this is another point. So, all these points should be protected from erosion. So, that is what we have discussed earlier. Okay. And now, so these are the design considerations. Before designing, we have to consider all the facts that we have discussed earlier. Now, we are moving on to the different layout. Okay, so here we have seen the common layout. Generally, what are the components of a uh, surface drainage system? How can we arrange that? That we have seen here. But this arrangement can be done in many ways. Okay, this field laterals can be arranged somewhere else. And uh, this uh, lateral uh, trains can be arranged somewhere. And laterals can be arranged somewhere. So, arrangement differs. So, according to the arrangement, we have four types of surface drainage systems. Four types. One is random field drain system second one is bedding field drain system third one is parallel field drain system and fourth one is parallel lateral ditch system another one is there cross slope ditch system i have uh, skipped that here 
uh, anyway it is not much important but i have given uh, that in the upcoming slide okay so we'll see each of them first one is random field train system so these and all are the specifications of the random field train system i'll first show you the figure of the random field train system so here you can see so this type of uh, drainage system is used in fields having random ditches okay uh, some fields are there in which random depressions are there so this is our field you can see this figure this is our field here and there some depressions are there okay in this field here and there some depressions are this is one depression this is one depression this is another this is another so what will happen when rain or uh, excess water comes all the depressions will be filled with water and this may cause water logging of the area so we have to remove this water so for that we are constructing this random field drain system how can we construct that we can connect all these ditches okay so these are known as field drains here this connection lines are known as field drains here and this field drains will be discharged to a lateral ditch and finally this lateral ditch uh, water from this lateral ditch is discharged to the main outlet ditch and finally it will be exposed to some outlet so this is the case of random field drain system this type of system will be provided in areas where there are random depressions over the surface okay now we will move on to the specifications in cross section they can be in v shape or parabolic shape okay we can give the channels in v shape or parabolic shape we can give actually this figure shows the plan view top view of the uh, field in cross section this this is our channel in cross section the channel should be v shaped or parabolic that is the thing we have uh, we are telling here and the side slope is given here minimum slide side slope is also given here all these things you have to note down minimum side slope is 4 is to 1 Mi minimum side slope of the particular channel will should be 4 is to 1 so that is the thing and the minimum velocities of flow within the channel should be 0.3 to 0.6 meter per second for depth of flow less than 1 meter so this we cannot control the water flow actually okay actually we cannot control the water flow but what thing what we have we can do is we have to design the ditch in such a way that the velocity of flow should not exceed 0.3 to 0.6 meter per second okay if we are uh, considering a proper slope then we can control the velocity of water that is the thing that we can do okay the maximum grade for sandy soil is 0.2 percentage and for clay soil it is 0.5 percentage minimum grade should be 0.05 percentage land slope should be 0.05 percentage for constructing this type of drainage system and uh, the depth of this particular system depends upon the outlet condition area and capacity of the channel and the discharge from such a system will be calculated by means of Manning's equation. I, I hope you know what is Manning's equation or otherwise we will discuss it in the next class where we are going to discuss about the design of open ditches. We will discuss this Manning's equation uh, which is uh, having a roughness coefficient of 0 0.04 will use and the minimum velocity is vary from that is the thing that we have discussed earlier. I think so. It is desirable to remove surface water within 12 to 24 hours. So we should remove the water within 12 to 24 hours. Otherwise, all the water will infiltrate into the soil, making the subsurface waterlogged. Okay. So to, for avoiding such a situation, we have to remove the surface water within 12 to 24 hours. And outlet of such a system may be a natural stream, constructed drainage ditch or protected slope if no suitable ditch is available. So outlet conditions after the main canal there should be an outlet right so an outlet should be a natural stream or a drainage ditch or some slope etc and now we will move on to the second system bedding system of course we will see the figure first this is the bedding system you can see this figure that is a clarification for this figure here uh, you can see a field this is our field so this field we are we have uh, uh, constructed some beds here these are beds these portions are known as beds and how these beds are pre prepared 
we have uh, used some farming farming equipments from uh, what is that from land formers or some other farming equipments are used to form this bed bed formers are used to form this bed and in between there will be dead furrows these are dead furrows shallow dead furrows will be there so these furrows act as field drains here okay these furrows will act as field drains here and the water will be collected all the water from this field drains will be collected in this ditches these are known as field laterals so here there is a ditch here also there is a ditch so you will get a confusion that the slope is in which direction so that is the thing here the slope may be in both the directions because the bed should be uh, like this you can see here the bed shape should be like this so both the direction the water will flow the water will flow in both the direction so here also the water will flow in both the direction here also the water will flow in both the direction such a way that it is prepared so half up to this portion the water will the water uh, from uh, up to the center of the bed the water will be uh, from this side the water will be drained to this drain and from this side it will be drained to this drain so uh, we can use uh, this bedding system for such a land okay such a land having slopes on both sides this is known as bedding system so bedding is a method of surface drainage consisting of narrow width low lands in which the dead furrows run parallel to the prevailing land slope and area between two adjacent dead furrows is known as bed yes and uh, slope should be 1.5 percentage should be given these are the things that you have to be noted maximum bed height should be 20 to 40 cm and length should be 90 to 300 uh, meter so and uh, tillage operations parallel to the bed have a tendency to retard water movement to the dead furrows that is the case so here you can see if we are doing we are uh, planting some crops on the bed right so after all we are making this field for cropping something right so we are planting some crop over this bed if we are doing tillage operations along the slope what will happen is the water movement towards this ditches will be lesser so what we have to do is we have to do tillage operations like this crossly in this manner you have to do the tillage operation not in this direction okay that is the thing so because um, you can just uh, you you just imagine in this figure it is very small the bed is very small uh, it is not like that the bed is somewhat wider so we can do the farming operation in a cross uh, that is perpendicular manner also that is the thing and uh, the bed width depends upon the hydraulic conductivity of uh, the soil if the soil has very low hydraulic conductivity then the bed width should be 8 to 12 meter so assume 8 to 12 meter it is a very large uh, width actually so uh, here in this figure it is very shorter but actually it is 8 to 12 meter it means some farm equipments can move up to that uh, end from one end to another so that is the thing uh, if it is low then it should be 15 to 17 meter if it is a very good uh, it has a very good hydraulic conductivity then it should be 20 to 30 meter wide and there are some disadvantages also the furrows require regular maintenance of course they are very shallow furrows so they requires regular maintenance and due to the movement of topsoil some reduction in yields nearer to the furrow uh, could occur yes we are removing the topsoil from the furrows right so nearer to the furrows some uh, fear giving slope nearer to the furrows then we, ha we we have to remove some topsoil so when topsoil is removed fertility of the soil will decrease and at that position uh, if crops are grown the yield will be less so that is one disadvantage and slope of the furrows may not be enough for drainage sometimes sometimes the slope of the furrows may not be enough for drainage so these are the disadvantages now we will move on to the third system parallel field train system this is the most effective method which is well suited for both irrigated as well as rain fed areas when the area has high rainfall also we can use this when the area is irrigated also then we can use this so, and it is also referred to as field ditch system we will see the figure first so here is the figure we will give parallel ditches here parallel ditches will be given 
this portion earlier in the second uh, category bedding system we have made a bed here so here in this uh, system there is no need of making any bed okay bed is not needed only two ditches are needed not two many ditches uh, if the area is too larger then many ditches are needed this ditches will act as the field drains and finally this uh, uh, water from this ditches will be collected in this outlet ditch so this is the thing okay so similar to bedding except that the channels are spaced farther apart and may have a greater capacity than dead furrows so, this is the difference between bedding and parallel field drain system in bedding the channels will be of shallow they are just dead furrows they are shallow channels and smaller capacity channels in this case it is a wider channel having great capacity and design and layout are similar to that of bedding except that drains need not to be equally spaced they are not equally spaced here in this bedding you can see that all the drains are equally spaced drains are spaced equally apart but in this case it may not be like that so one drain is here one drain is here one drain can be here or some other place like that and design of the ditch should be a minimum of point depth of the uh, ditch should be 0.2 meter cross sectional area should be 0.5 meter square and if the ditch is trapezoidal shape then the bottom width should be 2.4 meter this is as per american society of agricultural engineers 1986 okay these are the specification of parallel field drain system it should be having a side slope of 8 is to 1 or flatter the width should be uh, the what is that that ditch should be having a flatter slope side slope 8 is to 1 or flatter than that okay to facilitate crossing with farm machinery so all the farm machinery so that all the farm machinery can cross through the ditch plowing operations must be parallel to the channels but planting cultivating and harvesting are normally perpendicular to them so why we are giving all these things is we have to make sure that the water from the field can flow to the tree okay if some operations are done on the field then water will be uh, what is that logged in the field okay they cannot move from one place to another so uh, the direction of the farming operation have a very important or it is a very important factor which influences the flow of water so that we are discussing all these things here and also the maximum length of rows having a continuous slope in one direction is 180 meter the maximum length should be 180 meter and uh, maximum spacing should be 360 meter between the rows and on highly erosive soils the slope length should be reduced to 90 meter so normally it can be up to 180 meter the length of the uh, land should be up to 180 meter normally but if it is a very high erosive soil then we can uh, give the length only up to 90 meter or less and this parallel field drain system can be of uh, another one type that is w train uh, so this is it w train here what we are doing is we are constructing two ditches very closer two ditches very closer so it will be in a w shape like this here one ditch is there here one ditch is there okay so that is the thing uh, in w train this again a parallel field drain system W train is best adapted to relatively flat land where the rows drain from both directions. If if this rows drains from both direction, then we can use this method. Okay, either we can use bedding method. Uh, we cannot use bedding. Uh, we we have to use this method. Okay, that is the thing. And there are some advantages and disadvantages for this W train. It is given here. W train allows better row drainage. it may be used as a turn row turn row means we can just turn our uh, farm uh, farm machinery equipments through these rows okay uh, equipments that uh, just like tractors or vehicles or uh, other farm implements we can turn using these rows we can turn the equipments using these rows so these are the advantages and disadvantages of w trains that you can read and the fourth one is parallel lateral ditch system or parallel open ditch system okay so we will see the figure it is same as that of the uh, what is that earlier what we have discussed the only difference is 
the ditches should be of higher depth the ditches should be of higher depth than that of uh, uh, what we have discussed earlier parallel field drain system okay similar to that of parallel field drain but it will have deeper ditches which uh, cannot be crossed with the formation array earlier ditches can be crossed with the formationary but in this case we cannot use formationary equipments across the ditches that is the thing and this can be used to move both surface as well as subsurface water okay and the minimum size for open ditches is 0.3 meter and the side slope are steeper than 6 is to 1 spacing should be 60 to 200 meter so these are the main things that we have to see in this thing and uh, here are some parameters some specification in sandy soil the maximum spacing between two ditches should be 200 meter that is this distance this distance to, should be 200 meter in sandy soil in case if it is other mineral soil we have to uh, give only 100 meter spacing and minimum side slope should be 1 is to 1 what do you mean by slide, side slope this is a ditch it has some uh, trapezoidal shape here you can see so this is our ditch it has some trapezoidal shape so this is the side slope so we have discussed many times side slope we have discussed many times but actually what it is is it is this slope the slope of this side so all that thing is given here and finally the final one which is not much important but still uh, it is important in case of drainage it is known as cross slope ditch system Cross slope ditch system is nothing but uh, the ditches are given across the slope. If a slump slope is there, we will give the ditches across the slope, perpendicular to the slope. So what will happen? All the water from the ditches will come to this. I mean, all the water from the uh, slope will come to this ditches and we can drain it out. Okay, this can be otherwise called as terraces. You all know what are terraces. So it is just terraces. So here there is a figure of this. Here we have given a ditch here or else we can uh, consider that the slope of the land is in this direction. Then we are giving slope here. This is this is the slope of the land. We are constructing ditches here. Okay. So all the water from this slope will be collected in this ditches. And finally it will be given to the main outlet point. So this is about cross slope ditch system. And these are the different kinds of surface drainage system. Thank you.